choose our socks for success in all endeavors. Fortunes rises from the heel and good luck for life. Good morning. Today is Sunday, October 27th, 2024. Today in history, on this day, 749 years ago, Amsterdam, the capital of the Netherlands, was established. As the birthplace of the world's first stock exchange, Amsterdam played a key role in capitalism and international trade. It remains a renowned tourist destination and global metropolis, ranking third in Europe, behind only London and Paris. Welcome to today's Qingqiao Morning News. Let's start with political updates. Luong Quang elected as Vietnam's president. According to the Vietnam News Agency, on October 21, Vietnam's National Assembly elected Army General and Permanent Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam Central Committee Luong Quang as the new president. Luong Quang, 67, succeeds to Lam, who had taken on the presidency in May and later became General Secretary in August following the death of former party leader Nguyen Phu Trong. In his inauguration speech, Luong Quang pledged to strengthen national defense and uphold independent, multilateral foreign policies. He stressed maintaining party unity in building an incorruptible, strong, socialist state under the rule of law. Quang is Vietnam's fourth president in two years, following political turbulence triggered by Nguyen Phu Trong's anti-corruption campaign, which led to the resignation of former presidents Nguyen Xuân Phuc and Vo Van Thuong. UK immigration surge hits 75-year high. According to Reuters, the British Office for National Statistics recently released new population data. As of mid-2023, the UK population has reached 68.3 million, with an annual growth rate of 1%. All four major regions, England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, are experiencing growth, primarily driven by a significant increase in net immigration, which marks the largest annual rise in 75 years. Following Brexit, changes in visa rules led to a sharp decline in immigrants from the EU. However, new work permit regulations resulted in a surge of immigrants from India, Nigeria, and Pakistan. This influx prompted far-right groups to hold anti-immigration demonstrations in August, posing new challenges for the newly elected Labour government. Australia to spend 7 billion Australian dollars on US long-range missiles. According to Reuters, on October 22, Australian Defence Minister Marr announced that Australia will invest 7 billion Australian dollars to purchase US-made SM-2IIIC and SM-6 long-range missiles for the Navy. The SM-6 missiles will be deployed on the Hobart-class destroyers and future Hunter-class frigates to enhance Australia's air and missile defence capabilities. The SM-6 is the most advanced naval air defense missile in the United States, capable of intercepting ballistic missiles and attacking ships and ground targets, as well as conducting air-to-air -air tests. The Australian Navy test-fired a Raytheon SM-6 missile from a warship during joint exercises with the United States in Hawaii in August. U.S. adds $800 million to aid Ukraine's drone production. Comprehensive news from New York. Sources indicate that the United States is enhancing military assistance to Ukraine, preparing an aid package worth 800 million US dollars to support Ukraine's drone production. Ukrainian President Zelensky stated that this drone program is in addition to the 400 million US dollars in weapons assistance announced by US Defense Secretary Austin during his visit to Kyiv. Meanwhile, the Russia-Ukraine war has intensified amid reports that North Korea has sent 1,500 special forces to the Russian Far East. At a UN Security Council meeting, US Deputy Permanent Representative to the UN would warn that if North Korea were to send troops to Russia, it would be a dangerous and extremely worrying development, and noted that consultations with allies are underway to assess the potential impact. HSBC to streamline organizational structure. According to Bloomberg News, on October 22, HSBC Group announced plans to streamline its organizational structure to accelerate the implementation of priority strategies. HSBC Holdings will reorganize into four major businesses, Hong Kong, UK, Corporate and Institutional Financial Services, and International Wealth Management and Financial Excellence. HSBC Group CEO Georges Badget El Hedri stated that this new structure will create a leaner, more dynamic organization. Additionally, a 12-member group operating committee will replace the current 18-member group executive committee as HSBC's main decision-making body. 
The group also appointed Pam Kaur as chief financial officer, marking her as the first female CFO in HSBC's history. Cuba faces power outages for three consecutive days. According to agents France Presa, Cuba's power system has been paralyzed again, marking the fourth power outage in 48 hours. This coincided with Hurricane Oscar making landfall, threatening Cuba's aging infrastructure and troubled economy. In response to the dual threats of nationwide blackouts and hurricanes, Cuban authorities announced the suspension of all non-essential activities and school closures. Previously, the Antonio Guitras thermal power plant, Cuba's main thermal power facility, experienced a sudden failure, leading to a complete cut in the national power system. The National Electric Company of Cuba has attempted several operations to restore power but has been unsuccessful. Glasgow to host 2026 Commonwealth Games Comprehensive news from London, on October 22, the Scottish city of Glasgow officially announced it will host the 2026 Commonwealth Games. The original host, the Australian state of Victoria, relinquished its hosting rights in July 2023 due to significant cost overruns. The 2026 Commonwealth Games are scheduled to take place from July 23 to August 2. Four venues will host competitions in 10 events, track and field, swimming, gymnastics, track cycling, women's basketball, weightlifting, boxing, judo, bowling, and three-on-three -three basketball. The last Commonwealth Games also saw a change in host city, Durban, South Africa, was replaced by Birmingham, UK, due to financial difficulties and slow preparations. According to Chihuo Daily, soda ash futures prices rose sharply in late trading, with the main contract closing at 1,481 yuan per ton, an increase of 2.78%. That's all for today's Qingqiao Morning News. Thanks for watching. Join us at the same time tomorrow.